Metallica guys, and we're going to get this figured out. And uh, you know, with this new streaming service, it's going to make it so much easier to uh, create better content for you guys. So let us work out the details. In the meantime, if you can't hear me or not, we're going to go through our colors here. We have from the Magic Fly set, I'll we'll just drift down my dial here. Uh, silver, violet, purple, the cobalt blue, uh, magenta rose.
confusing people. And uh, cool. like that, and we're gonna rock and roll, guys. All right, welcome everyone. Sorry about the technical difficulties. We'll eventually get it figured out. And uh, we're using this new restream service that will stream from one camera to like three or four different platforms, and that way we don't have to have all these different angles. Everybody will see the same thing. My wife's behind the scenes, kind of controlling everything. She'll be able to zoom in on details, and we're gonna get this all worked out, right? Talk louder. <laughs> Just gonna wake up everybody in the house. We're gonna speak louder, right? Let's see, what if I turn this back up? Does that help? Does it help? Good. Everything okay. is perfect. Just talk louder. Don't don't touch anything, right? Wife has done everything. Husbands, don't screw it up. All right. So, like I said, we're back with a 16 by 20 inch canvas today. Uh, we've got our Magic Fly colors and our Bob Ross colors. I'm gonna start with the Magic Fly. We have silver, uh, violet, purple, cobalt blue, magenta, rose, orange red, uh, lemon yellow, emerald green, yellow green, and that's it. And for our Bob Ross colors, we have uh, dark sienna, phthalo green, sap green, uh, phthalo blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, titanium white, bright red, yellow ochre and cadmium yellow, okay? You can always tell these runnier colors. The Bob Ross is a very dry kind of paint compared to these Magic Fly sets, which are sort of more wet, if that makes any sense. They're much more, you know, suitable for highlight colors and stuff, which is why I like to use them. You can find all of the, the colors, all the brushes, the canvas, the easel, the palette itself on amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art, okay? We're gonna jump right into this sucker. I've taken this 16 by 20 inch black canvas. I've covered it with Bob Ross Liquid Clear, which you can also find on my Amazon shop, amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. You see any of these other paintings back here where you want to get the hats or the t-shirts or anything that I offer, you can go to etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art and purchase anything. The more things that you guys buy from me and support my store, the more canvases I can buy and bring you guys free videos each week, right? We always go live on Sundays and we put out two videos throughout the week. So actually three times a week, you'll be able to sit and paint with Leave some black areas in there. Leave some black to kind of shine through. It doesn't make sense, but I love saying that. It'll let the black shine through, okay? I'm gonna come back in, I'm gonna brighten it up a little bit more of our cat yellow. Use these nice thick oil. Come back with our Bob Ross one inch brush. Again, you can find these amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. Everything that I use to create this painting can be found there, okay? I'm gonna come up here, just take the top corner of the brush kind of on an angle like this and just start to mix. With this liquid clear, it's very sticky. It's sticky and it's slick at the same time. It doesn't make any sense, but trust me, it is. We're gonna come back with a little bit of pressure and just kind of blend this little cloud all the way out. Not not too many, not too much blending, right? We want to be able to have these dark colors inside there in order for it to look like it's got a bunch of depth, okay? Well, you can come up out of your design a little bit in different places and just have it be this messy, far off galactic cloud, right? Just like that. All these beautiful colors, very simply, right there on the canvas. Take our two inch brush and swipe to the side. Or swipe to the other side. Up to you. Whatever you want to do. You'll hear me say that a lot. Your painting does not have to look like my painting, right? I'm showing you guys these cool techniques on how to do it. If you don't have all the colors yet, or you know, you don't like the colors that I use, and you want to use your own colors and make it different, you can absolutely do that. It does not have to look like mine at all. Okay? I'm gonna come in without washing the brush. We just dab it off on our little paper towel. Get some phthalo green and some white. Really 
layer it up here in the brush, and then maybe we'll come in. Maybe this one's kind of, this cloud's kind of off camera, right? Or off the, the easel. So we'll go down like this. Leave a little bit of black space in there. Dab it off. Come back with our yellows again, because the green and yellow just go so beautifully together. And a little bit of our phthalo blue, okay? Right here on the inside. Maybe some on the outside over here, too. It's all going to blend out anyway. Back with our one inch brush, we'll come in, a little bit of pressure, and come outside your lines. Remember, you want it, you don't want to have like a hard line out here in space. You just mix them up, but don't over mix them. You want to have them where you have all these different cool colors that are just kind of blended together in there. And then of course we gotta have our, our black kind of deep space shining through. Then we get this really cool scene that's coming together. Again, yours does not have to look like mine. It's going to be very difficult for you to get the exact amount of paint that you need that, that I got on my brush, right? It's The brushes are going to pick it up differently. It's never going to look exactly the same, so don't worry. I'm going to come back again. Just dab it off. We haven't cleaned the brush yet. You want to be careful when you're using paint thinner and liquid clear, you'll get this reaction that you don't want. So make sure your brushes are dry. And like I said, lazy painter, I don't really like to clean my brushes too often. So we do paintings where you, you know, if you don't have the paint thinner, you know, you can get through one whole painting and then go and clean your brushes afterwards. All right, we're going to come in a little bit more titanium white. And all this does is just brighten up these colors a little bit on this black canvas, makes them stand out a little bit more. We're going to go into our Lizarin Crimson. And maybe the phthalo blue, just a couple swipes into both. And we can come back. Maybe we'll come down here this time. And or from over here, it doesn't matter. But we want to leave spaces in between our clouds, right? You don't want to have cloud on top of cloud on top of cloud. You want to have these spaces of space, empty space in between, right? Come back in. A little bit more crimson, a little bit of white. And I always come down a lot further than I think I need to, just in case, you know, you don't, your mountain doesn't cover everything. Again, we're going to be doing space mountains. Both of those space mountain paintings sold so fast that I figured, you know, it doesn't make sense to not keep painting them. If they keep selling, I'm going to keep painting them, okay? Come back with our one-inch brush. Again, didn't, didn't wash it, just dabbed it on a paper towel. I'm just going to come in and just mix these again, leaving these dark spaces in between. You want to have dark space between your spacey clouds, okay? Look at all these beautiful colors. Just fantastic. All right, come down again, leaving these dark spaces. You don't want to mix it so much that you lose all the dark. That is not the idea. All right, now before we put any planets or anything in here, I'm going to take our two-inch brush. I'm going to go to the side, go to both sides on this one. You can lift it up if you wanted to. You can come to the side. You can do whatever you want. As long as these colors are nice and blended out, they won't transfer from one side to the other or go from color into color, right? As long as they're nice and blended. size Bob Ross liquid white jar and when I get done with one I always keep a spare lid to hold like a little petri dish right it's going to hold all my my liquid white that I want to use on the canvas that way I'm not diluting and dipping into my actual jar you put some out put it in your little petri dish and you'll be good to go what we're going to do is take a fan brush this one's a Sorrento artist loft you can get these on my Amazon shop amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art okay just want to cover the top bits of the bristles and then what we want to do is deposit all that, as much as you can get off the brush, right here on the edge of our canvas. And then we're going to come back in and just flick some stars right onto our, our canvas like this. And they're going to come out in these random shapes, random patterns, 
all throughout our clouds, all throughout the space in between our clouds, and even down here on the bottom. And if you like the way yours looks, bam, you can have one done in like 10 or 15 minutes, get your whole painting, and it'll be done just like this. And you can leave it all these spaced out, trippy clouds, just like so. Now remember, be close to your canvas when you're doing this, because you can flick it and it will hit stuff that's behind if you're not too close. If you're back here trying to shoot it, you might miss the canvas in a couple areas. And the less and less that you get on your palette here, the smaller and smaller your little far off galaxy stars will be. take and wipe it off because we have, you know, you'll forget about it over here on these white palettes and then it dries pretty quickly when it's real thin like that and then it's a real pain in the butt to get off of your, of your palette. This whole time while these little paints keep dripping down my, my palette here, just makes it look messy. I'm a neat freak, right? Even with painting, I'm a neat freak. Okay, now we got all these cool galactic clouds. Now we're going to come up, I'm going to show you some really cool techniques on how to make planets and moons. You could put a, you know, a ring around your moon. You could do literally anything. Let's see. So up here, maybe let's throw like a red planet. Let's get that crimson, this nice dark crimsony color. Maybe mix it with a bit of the magenta because we don't want the magenta to feel uh, left out, right? And why not? We'll take the Red Bull can today. 12-ounce Red Bull can, you can use... Um, you can use the Red Bull can, you can use a cup, you can use a soda can, you could use a big gulp, you know, cup from the, from the gas station. Whatever you want to use. And why don't we come in this way, and we're going to put this big red, kind of far off planet right back here. Holding our brush, like rotating it around so we keep the same amount of bristles on the canvas at all times. Right around the can and don't let your can slip. That's the, I've let it happen before, this slick canvas should get your can to slip like that. Okay, we can come in now. We've got this near perfect circle as long as you had all your brushes and your, you know, the same amount of bristles on your brush around there the whole time. And just like that, you get this awesome looking planet off in the distance just by using a can. Spend your money on your brushes and your tools. Figure everything else out, right? That's my motto. All right, now we'll come in, we'll take our lighter colors, kind of highlight this guy, a little bit of the yellow ochre and the cat yellow, and we're going to decide where our light is coming from in this painting. I'm thinking it's going to come from the right-hand side, okay? So we'll take, and this, this planet's going to be on a little bit of an angle, so we'll take these brighter colors, come and drop them on like this. we got this big gas giant out there in the, the cosmos, right? A lot of times you got to step back and look at it from a distance, right? When you're up close to your painting, you can't really tell. You know, you kind of get lost inside your own work. So take a step back and see what it looks like. See when you want to stop shading it. I usually come about two-thirds of the way over with our lighter colors, and you can go back with your darks and back and forth until you like the way that it looks. Okay, we'll come back in with our crimson, a little bit of that rose color. Come up this way. Sorry, the magenta. Let's throw some purple in there too. Why not? Why not throw some purple in there? Just whatever colors you want. You can do whatever it is you want to do. Take our one inch brush and just very lightly kind of blend these together. Just a couple swipes. And again, I never like to have mine on a straight you know, a perfectly straight line. So have a couple of your bits come over either side and you get this kind of far dark, the far off dark planet back there. I'll wash this brush off. A little bit, dab it on our paper towel. And now we got this wicked looking little planet back here. I'm going to take our Dugato brush here. It's a micro liner brush. 
can find these on my Amazon shop, amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. And these are, the, especially the thicker one is good for making these little far off moons back here. So what we're gonna do is get a bit of white, maybe grab a little bit of that cobalt blue because it's a little bit brighter than our phthalo blue, especially when you mix it with the white. And here's a trick you guys might not know. Grab a yardstick from Home Depot or Lowe's or your local hardware store and you can put it anywhere on your painting without having to touch the actual surface. And that way you can rest your hand, just like drawing with a pencil, and come up here and make these cool smaller details, right? Put this guy off in like deep space out here. Just make a little circle with this guy. Just like that. That way you're not having to try to float your hand over and do your circle. You might be able to do it. For me, it's a little difficult. Take our white, if all of our light's coming from this side, throw a little bit of white clouds just on the edge of this little moon back here. Real messy, real far away. Doesn't have, the details don't have to be real crazy on your small moons. And you can go as crazy as you want, but they don't have to be. And why not, we'll put another planet over here. Let me show you guys how to do one with, uh, with just your brush, right? Just your, your, your filbert brush. And why don't we throw like a, let's see, what color should we use, guys? Do we have any comments? Is anyone watching, by the way? Okay. If we have any comments, comment what color you guys think we should use, and we'll kind of just kind of collab on this, right? Put your put your name on it. I, I chose that color. So let's see what color, uh, we'll give everybody a chance here, and kind of suggest what color our little smaller planet should be back here with this green. We don't want to have it green, obviously, because it's going to go in the green area. Don't want to have it too dark. We could do red, since this one's a little bit maroonish. You could do a purple planet. You could do, you know, whatever we want, really. Orange, green, got obviously. Four different color greens here. Green we can Why don't we save our greens for our bigger planet that's going to go down here somewhere? Give everybody a chance. Comment, comment now what color we should use. My lovely wife will tell me. In the meantime, I'm going to make the, the base of it, and then we can highlight it with whatever color you guys want, right? <clears throat> so we're in, what I'm going to do for that, just to make it look like there's a little atmosphere around the planet, we're just going to take straight up white, okay? And come back here with our straight white, push it against the canvas real firmly, let it rotate around in this perfect circle, as long as you don't move. Kim Rex Road says purple. Purple, sounds good. All right, we rotate the brush. Let that sucker grow on us. Come down. You can see how I'm going up and down. Push it against the canvas. To help make it this Real perfect firmly. circle shape. Let it rotate around. Pull it away and you got this wicked planet. In this perfect circle. As long as you don't put our shadows on it again, everything, all the Kim lights Rex coming from this way. So maybe this one's sitting purple. straight up and down purple versus on an angle like these other guys come from the side. Actually, I want the darker purple over here. All right, just staying on the inside of our line, leaving this little area, this little circle of white around the outside. Okay, mix that guy in like that. Come back with our lighter color purple, come from this other side. Again, leaving that little area in there of white, and then you don't you don't want to at least I don't like having it in a very you know straight bit between your light and your dark. So kind of overlap a little, leave a little bit of that dark back there, just so you can see there's a little depth to this planet. Okay, that was a good suggestion, Kim. A good suggestion of color. <clears throat> giant planet that's going to be the closest to us, right? And all I use is a solo cup. I grab a little bit of red, a lot of bit of white right here on our filbert brush. And then we're going to come in, maybe our planet lives just kind of off center right down here. It sure does now. That's where she lives, right there. Remember, keep all the bristles the same around the cup. A lot of times
times your paintbrush will try to sneak its way under the cup. So try to keep the same amount of bristles pushed flat against the canvas and that way you get this near perfect shape when you go to make your, your planet, okay? A little bit more white. Just kind of fill this sucker in and then we can highlight this with some oranges, some red, some blue, whatever we want to do. And if you make this outer edge just a little bit brighter with that white, it'll look like an atmosphere around your planet. There we go. Plus all this white in here in the middle is going to help kind of brighten everything else up. Get that bristle out of there. What are you doing in there, bristle? Alright, it even looks cool just like that. You know what I mean? And you can leave yours however you want, but I like to highlight mine. Again, yours does not have to look like mine. I say that a lot. It could look completely different. Totally up to you. I'm just kind of trying to show you how we make these cool I mean, this almost looks good even without a, a Space Everest. But I said we were going to paint one, so we're going to paint one. All right. Let's do a little bit of... Uh, why don't we do green over here, guys? It would look neat if we did some green. We don't have a green planet. Kind of bring some of this green down and just kind of blend in everywhere. So we'll get a little bit of white, some phthalo green, some sap green, and all of our lights coming over here. So why don't we do this guy down like this? Again, leaving a little bit of our original color. So this one's almost got like a red atmosphere red and whitish. Even our dark green. I want it to be real dark too, so we're using the sap green, the phthalo green, and then when we come back we can put yellows and greens together to make a much lighter colored green. Again, you can see I've got these differences, right? The phthalo green, little stripe of sap, little stripe of phthalo, back and forth, back and forth, all the way around. don't want it to have these same colors all the time. It'll be flat, right? So make sure you throw some, some bit of randomness in there. Just like that. Okay, we'll come back with our kind of lighter color greens. Mix it a bit with this yellow. And it'll get real bright green. You can throw some of the white in there too. It's really bright. And then we'll come back from this other side. And we'll come this way. You can see the difference. See it right there, live on your screen from fabulous Las Vegas, guys. And then when we go to blend all these in, it's going to look really neat. I love this kind of yellow, lime, green sort of deal from Magicfly. It's such a great color, especially when you mix it with some yellow, and it just gets real bright. All right, how's that looking, babe? side first, kind of swipe over, just blending them together, but not over blending them, right? You still want to see that you have these differences in color. I'm always saying that. It's like my, should be my tagline, differences in color, because that's what Josh says all the damn time. All right. So we're going to mix these suckers up, but not too much. Every time you come into your dark, you're going to grab a little bit of that dark and bring it back into your light. And it looks really, really cool, you guys. This red outline, yellow greenish planet. And again, it's not a straight line. There's no hard line that's showing where the light is coming from. And I like it like that. I mix all those in. We get this really cool depth filled planet. Just like that. Take a step back and look at that, like you guys. Man, that looks good. Alright, throw another big moon on this guy, we've done purple, we've done dark, we've done light, we've done blue one way up there, what do we have left? Let me go like orange, we can do orange and red, a little bit of the cad yellow, just mix them again right on the brush, and then we can come up 
and go, let's see, let's go over here. Push it in, rotate. And then pull it away, just like that. And you get this perfect circle of a planet back there. Well, a moon anyway. Planet, moon, it's all the same. A little bit of our crimson. Maybe this guy is down like this. A little bit of crimson on it. That almost looks perfect just like that. Brighten it up with a little bit of white. This come from this side with a little bit of white. It's going to mix in with those oranges and the crimson. And all that pinging off the brush. And then we can start to kind of blend them in here. Just like so. Now we've got this lighter side and a darker side. Not very, you know, pronounced like this one up here, which is sort of light here. You can just play with it and until you like the way that it looks, you guys. That's what I do. Play with it until you like it. Alright, with this nice thick textured planet up there. Blend it out a little. Now you can see we've got this darker side and a lighter side. Again, not a straight line, right? Don't want to be straight line. Thomas Wool says, maybe one with rings. One with rings for Thomas. Got that. Let me do that. Okay, for the rings, I like these micro liner brushes from Meaden, right? You can find them again on my Amazon shop, amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. And I, they, they're much smaller than the Bob Ross script liner, and this is one of the bigger tips, okay? They make tips that are, are just tiny, tiny little small tips that you can use. Some of them are bent, some of them are straight. And they work perfect for these tiny details. We're actually going to use this bent one with a real small tip. And why don't we throw a ring off of this guy right here? And what we'll do, he's sort of on an angle like this. So what we'll do is we'll kind of pick... We're going to start about two-thirds of the way up, come out, wrap around through the planet, and then wrap around again, and you get these rings that look like it's kind of going back behind the planet there. Come out on this side, just making it a little bit brighter. Just like that, you guys. And throw a little ring off the side of your planet. Like this this moon got hit by something and just tilted its whole axis on the side. It used to be this way, and now it's kind of tilted over. So it's looking really good. Good suggestion, Tom. I like all the stars in this one. We'll come in, we'll throw like our big space mountain in here. Maybe it comes. We're going to figure it out. <laughs> thing about painting with Josh. We never know what it's going to look like until it gets done, right? So in order to make our mountain, we're going to take a bunch of black, blue, and crimson, and a little bit of the phthalo green even, just a big bunch of paint. And we're just going to mix it until it goes real dark, okay? We want it to be dark. Don't want to have the different colors in there. We want it to all be one solid color, this dark mass of paint, okay? Let's scrape up a bit of it and come in, just decide where our mountain lives. And we've got it up here, this big giant bit of mountain, right? Come down. Don't have to go all the way to the edge with your knife because it's gonna it's going to spread out when we start to mix it, okay? Big bit of mountain that comes in and just cuts off that planet. Kind of falling behind, leaving some of our purpley cloud back behind it, right? Again, don't go all the way to the edge with your knife. Come back in here and scrape up a lot of that thick paint. Pull it down as far as you can get it to go down. Come back with our one inch brush and just drag it out, whatever shape you wanted it to be. Leaving a little bit of color around the sides. Don't want to have it be like a triangle, so throw some humps and bumps and all sorts of stuff in it. Doesn't have to be like a pyramid, right? You want it to be rounded in some edges. Bring it down like this. Get all this fog down here. Come off the side.
side of our canvas that way. We might even try to do like a floating mountain. It'd look really neat. This side comes down over here. You can see where we're going with these stars down around the bottom, where our brush is kind of going into. It's a big bit of big planet, big mountain back here. Like we're sitting on this planet, which will eventually give a name. What do you guys think the planet's name should be? I like to do a couple letters with some numbers. Like the last one was uh, was JB10-6K. That was the that planet name, right? There's so many of these exoplanets that are out in space. They can't just name them, you know, Jupiter and Saturn and stuff like that. They've got to come up with all these numbers and letters mixed together. So somebody suggests what we should call this this planet that we're standing on and painting this scene. And this, could you imagine if you walked outside and this was your view? It would just be fantastic. I would love to live there. Oxygen-rich atmosphere. Giant star in the sky. Let's party! All right. Now, in order to shadow this sucker, being out in space, we could use anything you want. You don't have to use white for your snow or, you know, methane snow or whatever. It could be diamonds falling from the sky. You don't know. You're not there. You've never seen it. You could literally, you could have literally anything in space. So why don't we put a little bit of our our thalo blue with some white. Mix that up and get a bit darker. A little bit of that mountain mixture that's in there, right? And we'll just get this kind of darkish, bluish, gray shadow snow, okay? S snow in quotes. If all of our light is coming from that side, then we'll shadow it over on this side. What we're going to do is take our knife, straight as the canvas is. If your canvas is on a table, hold it flat. If it's on an angle, mine's about 10 degrees back from 90. So I'm holding my knife at 10 degrees back from 90, and that way the, the handle almost hits the canvas. Tom. Come down. Thomas Wool says, call it Planet Alizarin. Alizarin. All right. <laughs> That's how I'm going to list it then. Okay. And what we're doing is just putting our shadows in random places on the left sides of our peaks, right? Because all the light's coming from this side, so we're going to use the right side to use our bright colored paints and the left side to use our shadowy paints. Don't need a whole lot when we're doing shadows. And the reason I put the shadows in first is because it's especially easier for beginners. You can come back in with your highlight and go over your shadow and sort of make your mountain look the way you want it to look, okay? If you put your highlights on first and then you're trying to come back in and just do these little sections of shadow, it's much more difficult in my opinion anyway. All right, what are we, how are we going to highlight the sucker now? What do we do, like some orange snow, some orange, red, yellow? The orange and the yellow over here. We just make up a whole other pile. Be a nice little quick painting today. We don't want to over mix it, right? So leave some of these orange and yellow bits just kind of layered on top of your pile. That way when we come in we'll have all these differences in color, right guys? Come down, come down. Again, holding the knife, just letting whatever happens, happens. You don't want to force it, right? You don't want to force it. And you want to be quick about your, your highlights. If you're going too slow, the paint's not going to break, okay? So be fast. Start up here and just whoosh, whip it down. Whip it good. All right, got this over here. Looks like it's making a little turn. Maybe just drag the littlest bit of it, kind of mix it in with the shadowy color over here. Not too much, so you don't want to go too far. Got this guy. Again, you can make it however you want. Whatever's in the shadow, it's all up to you. All up to you. Maybe the only little bits of that light that are reaching from whatever sun that we're orbiting around is reaching over here. Not trying to make them all connect. Not trying to do anything. Just having you know, a little bit of light like it's bouncing off, hitting in different places. Maybe it's a little brighter over here. Maybe these two, these two guys come down and connect in different spots. Right? But because we've used, we layered our 
paint in our pile, it's not all the same color. Right? I don't want it to all be the same. So we don't overmix it, come back in and we can do whatever it is that we want to do because it's our little world, right? What I don't like is when it's on a, a straight line. So now we've taken, the, the, instead of the ridge going this way, now the ridge is coming this way. Right? You can literally do it however you want to do it, man. I mean, these two ridges connect down here. It gets brighter down around the bottom. Maybe they come back this way. Who knows? As long as we're not over-mixing it and not going over it too many times, it's not going to ruin all these cool little breaks that are happening in here. Stuff is just happening naturally right down in here. And you just make a mess. That's all I do when I paint. It's just make a literal mess onto the canvas. And it'll end up looking really, really neat. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is come back. We need a couple of our darker shadowy bits to be a little bit darker. So we're going to take that original kind of mountain mixture that we made up and come back and just drop some of those dark bits right over the top of that blue. And like I said, whatever sticks, sticks. Don't force it. Don't need it to be crazy. But these real dark shadows just kind of make every all the other colors just pop out. A little bit of dark down there. Maybe these are rocks that never got covered up. You can come in even and make like a, you know, you can change the, the layout of your your mountain and make it darker, make little shadowy bits in different places. However you want to do it. But don't overdo it. Because then it'll all be dark. And they'd be like, Josh, your technique didn't work. And I'd be like, well, what happened? I'd say, well, I was doing this and then this happened. I'd be like, well, you went kind of crazy on the darks. Look at that. Does that look good? That looks amazing. Super textured, super thick. You come down this side. Again, I don't like stuff on straight lines, so maybe the shadow is casting, and now we've only got this little bit over here. Come in, maybe add a little bit of darkness in between these areas. And that'll look like the, the light is just playing all these tricks on us. This real jagged mountain. <coughs> Alright, now what we can do is our, take our one inch brush or two inch brush. Let's take our two inch brush. We go like this from the bottom, just sort of swipe it up in the direction that we went. So this side we swiped up, right? This side maybe we'll come over this way because we came down this way. Just like that, and we're going to come back in, kind of turn it flat, and just start bouncing in some fog, right? Just bouncing in on different levels.
slash shop slash happy landscape art. You can go to my Instagram at happy little landscapes. Of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can find that by, by going to youtube.com slash C slash happy little landscapes or searching happy little landscapes on YouTube and you'll be able to find my YouTube channel there. Where else am I? I'm on Twitch. We're streaming on Twitch. We're streaming on Amazon. What's my Twitch? Happy Little Landscapes? Yeah. So I'm assuming twitch.com slash happy little landscapes, something like that. But besides that, guys, I really like the way this one turned out. I love how we have this dark space down in the bottom and we just got this floating rock out here in space. It might be one more small little planet over here. I always get out much more paint than I actually need. So maybe we'll put a little purple purple moon kind of orbiting this guy over here. Is he orbiting this guy or is he just so far away which is what's making him small? You don't know. I don't know. That's what's so cool about art. Somebody could come and look and say oh there's a little small planet, small moon orbiting this bigger planet when in fact it could be much further out in space. It really could be. That. And on these small moons, you don't need to highlight them a whole lot. But just like that. How long have we been filming, hun? Babe, how long have we been filming? Uh, we have been filming for 58 minutes and 47 seconds. Okay. Not all of that is painting time, though, because we had the sound issues in the beginning. So... I usually try to stay around an hour, so we're going to end this one, guys. There's nothing else I would rather, you know, I, I would do to this painting to make it any better. I love how the mountain came out. I love the planets. You know, you can keep adding little mini moons and rings around your planets if you wanted to. You could continue on with another mountain. You could put a, a lake of acid down around the bottom like this painting back here behind here. But I don't like to paint the same things over and over and over again. Um, I really liked how this one came out, and we'll call this one Space Everest 3 because it's so close to Everest 1 and 2. You've got to have a Space Everest, right? It's out there somewhere. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for sticking with us. And if you'd like to get this painting or any of my other paintings, hats, shirts, pillows, flip-flops, phone cases, laptop sleeves, stuff like that, you can go to etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. If you want to paint this painting, you're like, Josh, I don't have all those colors. Guess what? Amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. I've made lists of everything that I use, all the Bob Ross brushes, the Bob Ross primer paint, the liquid clear, the liquid white, the liquid black, his whole brush line, all of his paints, the Magic Fly paints, the Meaden brushes, the little micro, the Nick Pro micro fan brush. <laughs> that's a mouthful. Nick Pro micro fan brush set that I use that we didn't use in this painting, but I use it in some of my other videos. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, search Happy Little Landscapes or YouTube.com slash C slash Happy Little Landscapes. Hope you guys subscribe to my Twitch channel, uh, which we're just filming for the very first time on today. Uh, hi, guys on Twitch. My Amazon Influencer channel. Hi, guys there. Uh, obviously, follow my Facebook page at Happy Landscape Art. Instagram at Happy Little Landscapes. I know I've said everything twice, but just in case you weren't paying attention the first time. So we're going to say goodbye, guys. And... Uh, we will catch you next Sunday for another live. And we, oh, we have actually got an art off I want to talk about. Uh, our art off is actually, it's, it's this painting just a little bit differently. Uh, this guy from Dean, uh, sorry, this guy Dean from Scenescape Shop on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram challenged me and said, hey, let's paint some space mountains. I said, you're on. I, it's right in my wheelhouse, space mountains, okay? So we did that. We're going to be launching those videos. And we're going to post the pictures together on Thursday, the 25th. March 25th of 2021 uh, in our Bob Ross oil painting group on Facebook. I'm gonna post them side by side. You guys can vote on the winner, okay? Obviously, vote for me. All my fans vote for me. I'm sure he's gonna get all of his fans to vote for him, and he has a little bit more. So I really need you guys to come in and vote, all right? So besides that, uh, I hope you guys have a great day, and you know, send me, <coughs> excuse me, send me your finished paintings to facebookcom art. I'd love to see you guys, you know, what you can do with the techniques I've showed you today. And, uh, yeah, I have nothing else to say. Babe, I want to thank you for being behind the scenes and, you know, uh, monitoring all the comments and 
everything else that you've done, she's set up literally everything for me. I couldn't do what I do here without my beautiful wife. Look at her roll her eyes. I'm telling the truth, hon. Yeah, I love you in front of everybody. I love you so much. So, all right, guys, we're going to say goodbye. I'm not sure if there'll be a delay. We're going to stand here. Last time I got yelled at, so. Okay. <laughs> Mwah. Love you. And I uh, love you guys out there in the cyber world. Uh, tune in next week for my next live video, and we're going to say peace. While I go clean up.